Who is Chinlo? Chinlo is a modern day griot. Chinlo is a, a modern day storyteller, a hip hop head. Let this shit not. Why does the State Department pay to send a hip hop band overseas? Hip hop can be a chess piece. Hip hop is America. A change in Syrian policy because Chinlo. Chin loaded general, analog to digital. Track record long, my catalogs and oracle. Craft every song, I'm timeless in memorial. You ain't study my story, homie, then I'm ignoring you. Who the hell are you? Actually, a real close friend and colleague of mine um, is the is the person that really motivated me to do the remix initially. I remember we were riding around the city, you know, here in New York, riding around, and Hot 97 was playing the Jay Z remix, like right when he got back, like Jay Z song, Open Letter. Jay Z and his wife Beyonce, two mega international mega stars, took a trip to Cuba. Um, supposedly, it was sanctioned by the U.S. Treasury, and he caught a lot of flack from, you know, folks in the Cuban American community as well as, you know, certain folks on the conservative side of the aisle who feel like the US, no US citizen should be traveling to Cuba because it's a communist nation in the history of Castro, et cetera. Um, so he basically fired back. And the more I listened, the more I started delving deeper into what he was saying and understanding the context for the song. I have experience traveling around the world with the State Department, you know, on trips that were sanctioned by the U.S. government. And it's interesting that, you know, Jay goes to a place in, in, a, in a, a place in the world that the U.S. is now trying to get more of a foothold in. Um, he's there and can wage a lot of influence and he's getting public criticism where they were sending me to places, you know, um, where the U.S. traditionally doesn't have good relationships. And some places right now where war is raging. You know, and they're huge players trying to grab their pieces of the pie in places that I, I visited. In 2010, um, my band was selected as one of 10 bands to represent um, the U.S. through a program that is really sponsored and initiated by Jazz at Lincoln Center. So Jazz at Lincoln Center had a program called The Rhythm Road. Um, and I found out later that it's a partnership between Jazz at Lincoln Center and the U.S. State Department. And it's through um, the Department of Education and Cultural Exchange. And so they send bands around the world to do, you know, these exchange programs um, where you go, you perform, you do workshops. Oftentimes, you know, you're dealing with young people and you're, you're at schools, universities, you're in, you know, the cool parts of town, um, just connecting with people, you know, in that. I know CBS, um, CBS actually came and followed me and my band while we were in Syria. And you know, did a whole it was a whole show about my visit there on CBS Sunday morning. As Tracy Smith reports now in our Sunday morning cover story. The State Department now sends music groups to places like Syria, a country on the list of state sponsors of terrorism. But where jazz was the coolest sound of the 1950s, the young target audience in Syria today calls for a totally different kind of music. My first show home in the wild. My queen's at the front of the crowd. It's good to see you, mama. Meet Chen Lo and the Liberation Family, a hip-hop band from Brooklyn, New York. Why would the State Department pay to send a hip-hop band overseas? Hip-hop is America. I mean, and so is jazz. And so is every other form of music with American roots that tell a story. <laughs> It may be a little bit um, hopeful because I can't point to a change in Syrian policy because Chen Lo and the Liberation family showed up. But I think that we have to use every tool at our disposal. So we move a lot of different pieces on the chessboard every day. It's multidimensional chess, if you will. Hip hop can be a chess piece. Absolutely. <laughs> I know Al Jazeera English wrote an article um, I think it was in, it might have come out in 2012, maybe late 2011. Um, actually, no, it came out in 2012. And the article basically talked about some of these trips and 
I wasn't totally the subject, but I was one of the main focuses of the, of the article because Hillary Clinton specifically mentioned some of my trips, um, you know, going and I caught a lot of flack. There was a crazy backlash. Uh, it was interesting. I was like, man, you know what I'm saying? Am I gonna lose my, you know, my credibility? Um, as a result of this article and the things people were saying, but I thought what was really interesting about the article was that um, there was minimal research done. A very poor journalism um, happened um, with this article, in my opinion. I was never called, I was never interviewed. Um, all they did was take these quotes that were circulating and they were editing these quotes and putting them out as face value. Um, this is who Shen Lo is and this is what he's done.